5.5 indefinite integrals and the substitution rule. Indefinite. So, here's our substitution rule theorem. If u is equal to g of x is a differentiable function, whose range is an interval i. and f is continuous. On i. Then, the integral of f of g of x times g prime of x dx is equal to the integral of f of u du. So uh, what we're doing is we're 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 uh, <laughs> the substitution rule is essentially the inverse of our of our um of our composition rule or our or our chain rule essentially. So what we're doing is we're undoing the chain rule. Remember that this represents the derivative of f of g of x. So the integral of the derivative of f of g of x is, let me kind of erase this, because we'll, we'll kind of explain it in a second here. So this would be equal to, um, wow. Now I'm gonna leave it. So this is gonna be equal to, um, f of g of x d g of x oh that's probably why they did that okay could have tried to make it look a little prettier but it, it, it will make it far more complicated looking so f of u d u all right so um where this uh What this really is is uh, is kind of a substitution to make uh, a complicated structure look look really simple. Uh, when you look at uh, when you look at this on the left, um, when you look at this on the left, it looks really messy. But if you look on the right, it actually looks very easy. And that's what that's essentially what we're going to do. But our du is going to be a little bit different than dx, and I'll kind of show you what happens there. So how this is technically how this is done is. Uh, what we have is we have u is equal to a g of x. So what that would mean is du dx would be equal to g prime of x. So du du would be equal to g prime of x dx. So substituting all these pieces into the original function will we'll spit out that f of u du. So um, this piece right here, this this g of x is right here, which is equal to u. So that becomes the integral of f of, well, u. Now your g prime of x dx, which is right here, ends up being your du. And we're going to be doing, um, you know, this stuff right here, this middle ground stuff is essentially what we're going to be doing, is we're going to pick a u, and then we're going to pick a du, and um, then we're going to be able to simplify it. It takes a little bit of practice.
And uh, once you get the hang of it, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty straightforward. So example. So when we take this, um, when we, let me call this A, I should give some instructions. Okay, find the antiderivative using substitution, so A. Well, what I actually have here, and I'm not sure if you guys can see it right now, but this really isn't, um, I have a function that is of that form. Remember, I was looking for a function that looks like f of g of x multiplied by g prime of x dx, which is what I have here. If I rewrite this, this is the integral of, um, sorry, what this is, to the, let's say, third power. No, let's make it even a little more wild. So let's say the fifth power. So your, your function inside of a function, your g of x, is going to be this piece right here. It's going to be your x squared plus 7. So that means your f of g of x is going to be the x squared plus 7 all the way to the fifth power. So if I rewrite that, this is x squared plus 7 to the fifth power. And then your g of x, notice that if g of x is equal to x squared plus 7, the derivative of x squared plus 7 is um, 2x dx. So this is 2x dx. So I have something exactly of that form f prime of g of x times uh, 2x dx. Now, we don't have to rewrite this. I'm just trying to show you that, that, that that's, that's kind of what we're looking for. We're looking for a function with its derivative as, as well. So how we solve this is we figure out a u. Well, I know that u happens to be this, this x squared plus 7, so it's this x squared plus 7. Let me uh, erase some of this. So I know that u is this. This is your x squared plus 7. So u is equal to x squared plus 7. Now what I need is I need a, um, I need a du. Now your du is going to be equal to the derivative of this thing uh, with a dx next to it. So it's a differential. So I find the differentials is very similar to finding the derivatives. So what I can do is I can say uh, du dx, which is just the derivative of this thing, would be equal to 2x. So if you technically, that's not really exactly what you're doing, but you solve for du, that dx is going to go to the other side. It's not technically multiplication, so um, it's a differential. But at least the algebra, at least algebraically it kind of works that way, and why we like Leibniz notation so much. So this is 2x dx. So from now on, when you want to find the differential, I'm just looking for your du. Take the derivative of this and then, take the derivative of this and then follow it by your dx, okay? So you don't have to, you know, you don't have to write this black part. It's not necessary. So now we can make our substitutions. So I want to go back into this original function. So I'm going to write the function with the colors. So this is the integral of, we have 2x Oh, that's not the right color. Okay. So that's the exact function, and if you look at the colors, I have everything matched up. But your 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 du dx um, is. Is right here. This is your du dx right there, and also your um, your u, which is right here. Now remember that that uh, that your g of x is the green function, and your g prime of x dx is going to be that red function. So your two x dx. Your f function is still going to be there. That's that's the thing you're still going to have to find the antiderivative of. So your f function is the black function that's still left over. So it's the fifth power function. Now, uh, 
now we're just going to make our substitution. So this is the integral. We'll start out with the green first. So the green is going to be, here's your f function, fifth power. The green is u, so this is going to be u. And then your 2x dx is going to become your du. And now it's, that expression there is far less complicated than the original. And I can take its antiderivative. So this is just the uh, power rule. This is going to be equal to u to the sixth over 6 plus c. Now remember that I'm not looking for a function of u. I'm looking for a function of x. So we're going to unsubstitute. Remember that u is right here. Substituting that back in for u, this is going to be equal to x squared plus 7 to the 6th all over 6 plus c. So this is how we um, essentially integrate or take the antiderivative of a, um, of a composition. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do the sign. It looks like it. It's not better. All right. So what you're looking for is you're looking for a function. And also, um, after you find that function, you're going to take the derivative and you're going to see if that other function is in there. Now, it doesn't have to be perfect. Remember that um, that constants are not that important. We can pull them in and take them out. So what I'm noticing is uh, is that your u function looks like this x cubed, this x cubed minus 4 because it's a function inside of a function. So let's just try that. u is equal to x cubed minus 4. So that means your du, your du would be equal to the derivative of that thing with a dx after it, so it would be 3x squared, and then don't forget your dx. Now notice that we have an x squared. What we don't have is a 3x squared. So what I'm going to do is, instead of having a 3x squared here, I'm going to put a 1 third in front of this. I'm going to divide both sides by 3. x squared dx. So I'm just sending the 3 to the other side. Now I have exactly what I need, and I can make our substitution. So what's nice about constants is, is, is we can... They're not a big deal. You just send them to the other side. So I'm making our substitution. So this is going to be equal to the integral. Remember, the black function is still going to be there. I'm going to have the sign of that, right? That's still your f function. Now your g of x, which is your u, is going to be equal to, um, remember, your x cubed plus 4. This is going to be substituted for u, so u is going to go there. And then your um, x squared dx is going to become one-third du. So I'm going to put the one-third right here, one-third. And then your differentials are always going to come at the end. So that's what your x squared, you know, that thing got replaced with this. So what I mean by that is that thing is, is this. That, that was replaced by one-third du. All right, so um, this I can take the integral of because... I know that you can pull out constants and taking the integral of the uh, antiderivative of the sine of u is, is straightforward. It's, uh, it's going to be minus the cosine of u. So this is going to be minus one-third cosine of u plus c, where u, don't forget to unsubstitute. Remember this, this u is still your g of x. It's still right here. Don't forget to unsubstitute that. So plugging that back in for your final answer minus one-third times the cosine of x cubed minus four plus c. And like I said, this is just going back in for where u was. This is what it is. So, all right. 
find your function inside of a function. So I can see that the sine function is being plugged into, um, into your square root function. So I'm kind of guessing that that's going to be your u, because it's the function inside of a function. Now the hope is, is that when I take its derivative, I find uh, another function outside of that, f. So du is going to be equal to the cosine of x dx. So we're good here. This is Everything's here. This is uh, your cosine of x dx. It's just going to become du. And then your sine of x is going to become u. So this is going to be... Make sure that you write the black function in first, the, the f function. So uh, the sine is going to be u, so it's going to be u here. And then your cosine of x dx, your red, is just going to become du. And now I can take its antiderivative. So this is going to be equal to um, the antiderivative of u to the 1 half du, which is going to be u to the 3 halves divided by 3 halves plus c. So we have 2 thirds u to the 3 halves plus c. And then don't forget to unsubstitute. Remember that this is this is still your u right here. So don't forget to plug that back in. That's your last step. I can I can do better. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's better. All right. Pretty complicated, but again, what we're looking for is I'm looking for a function that's probably inside another function, or uh, but most importantly, I'm looking for a function whose derivative is also in here. So I'm looking for a u, and then I'm also kind of looking to make sure du is in there. So what I know is that the derivative of the secant of x is the secant of x tangent of x. So it kind of is a giveaway that that your that your secant of five x that's going to be your u function. So u is going to be equal to the secant of, um, of 5x. Now your du is going to be the differential of that, so the derivative followed by dx. Well, the secant of 5x, its derivative is secant 5x tangent 5x, but you still have to multiply by what's inside, so you still have to multiply this by 5, and we're going to have a dx. Now looking up here, I have a secant of um, 5x, a tangent of 5x, but I don't have a 5, so I'm going to get rid of that 5. I'm going to divide it to get rid of it. This is going to be equal to the secant of 5x and then the tangent of 5x and um, dx, and now I can make a direct substitution. So remember that the red, which includes the dx, can be substituted for 150 u, and the green is just u. So first we're going to write the function. So the black function is what's left over, what's still dark. So it's going to be the division side, and it's going to be the square root function. So that's your f function. It's 1 over the square root function. Now your green is your u, so your secant is u. So you'll plug in your secant of x, which is in the bottom. It's going to become u. And then the numerator, which is all that red, is going to be equal to um, 1 fifth, and it's just du. Because the one fifth can go a little bit more centered if I want to make it look more balanced. So, one fifth du, and that's it. 
a much, much, much easier function to deal with. So pulling out that one fifth and knowing that the square root's in the bottom, so this is u to the negative one half du, that means I can take its antiderivative would be equal to one fifth. Adding one is going to be u to the one half divided by one half. Let's do it that way, plus c. So this is going to be equal to one fifth times two over one u to the one half plus c. So this is going to be two over five square root of u plus c. And now don't forget your last step though. Remember this is still u, and I'm not I'm not asking for a function of u. I'm not asking for a function of u. I'm asking for a function of x. So our last job is to write that back in two. Fifth square root of well u is the secant of five secant of five x, and then we have our plus c because it's our general antiderivative. What's nice is we could actually do definite integrals here. You know I can put like from zero to one or whatever, or from zero to pi, and um, then you just plug it in down here, minus the c part of course. Um, oh yeah, let's do another. So C. Not C, but like like E, I think. Where are we? Ah, uh, model letters. I need to know now. That was C, this was D. This was D, so this next one is gonna be E. Not that one, but this one. All right, um, E is going to be the integral of five. No, I'm going to do better than this. Actually, I'll do this one first, and then I'll do another one next. So five natural log of x all over x dx. Or, oh, better, better than that. Let's put the five on the bottom. So I want to find the antiderivative in this. Now remember what I what I'm looking for is I want um, I'm looking for functions whose derivative is still in there. Well, the first thing I know is I got a constant in there. That thing's annoying. Let's pull that out. So one fifth times the integral of the natural log of x over x dx. Now I'm looking for a function whose derivative is also there. Now uh, when you see a natural log function in this book, it's almost always when you see a natural log function that is your u. It is almost always. So what I'm going to say is u is going to be equal to the natural log of x. And it's kind of also obvious because when you take the derivative of this, when you find your du, what it does is it introduces an x to the denominator because the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x dx. So that that is why that's the case. So um, now I see my, my 1 over x dx. To be honest, it's 1 over x dx. It's the entire thing. It's this dx. So when I make my substitutions, this is going to be equal to one-fifth times the integral. Now, I don't see any black left. So when you do your natural log function, this is just going to be u. It's all that's left is just u. The reason why there's no black part of the function left is because this division here, well, I guess you can see it now, but that division, oh, what's that? that division right there is this division right here. And so it's going to be u, and then your um, your 1 over x dx is going to become du, so your 1 over x dx is just going to become du. So this is going to be equal to 1 fifth u squared over 2 plus c, not forgetting to substitute for your u, which is the natural log of x squared, and then 5 times 2 is 10 plus c. I'm going to do a very similar one over here, so f. The integral of the natural log of x cubed all over x dx. Now this is it's it's an it's almost identical. It just has an extra step in it. What I know with powers and logarithms is you can pull them out. You know the, the you know these powers from logarithms the exponents are the same as coefficients. So this ends up being the integral of three natural log of x over x dx, and then you can pop out that constant of 3 over 1. So 3 integral of the 
natural log of x over x dx. And now we already know that value. Like, um, so u is going to be equal to the natural log of x. du is going to be equal to 1 over x dx. So this is going to become 3 times the integral of u du. So this is equal to 3u squared over 2 plus c. So this is going to be equal to um, 3 halves and then natural log of x squared plus c. I'll try to give you as many as I can. So um, antiderivative of... Uh, Than that. Ah, I got a good one. Tangent of x dx. And then we'll do one more. This is this is always on a test, just to let you guys know. I always put that on a test because uh, it's just something I expect you guys to know how to do. Alright, so um what I need you to know is that the tangent of x is built of two functions who are derivatives of each other. So this is the sine of x over the cosine of x dx. So um, what you're looking for is you're looking for a function um, um, whose derivative is also in there. Now note that uh, it's almost always, your u is almost always uh, your denominator, except if it's a logarithm. The reason why it's not when it's a logarithm is because a logarithm introduces a denominator, but nothing else does. So the problem is if you say, well, what if u is the numerator? Well, when you take your du, you get a cosine of x dx. And the problem is I'm not looking for a cosine of x of dx. I'm looking for that. So, you know, this sine x will never produce a cosine at the bottom, so it won't work. So that's why I, what I say, uh, that's why I say um, when you're looking at, at expressions, your u tends to usually be in the denominator, unless it's a logarithm, because the derivative of the logarithm will give you a denominator. All right, so your u, your u is probably going to be this cosine of x. So this is going to be the cosine of x. So u is equal to the cosine of x. And then um, your du is going to be equal to the derivative of that, which is going to be minus the sine of x dx. And that's what I have here. I have a sine of x dx. So I don't need that negative. So put the negative on the other side. So multiply both sides by negative 1. Or divide both sides by negative 1. It's the same thing. So now I have my substitutions. This becomes, remember, uh, what's still black is this the fraction bar. So this is going to be equal to the integral. That fraction bar is still there. The cosine's in the bottom. So you're going to have your u down there. That's why I do the u first. It verifies that you put it in the right spot. So if you do have it in the denominator, it's down there in the denominator. So there's your u, taking care of that. Now your um, sine of x dx is going to be the numerator, which becomes negative 1 du. So negative 1 du. So uh, what I can do is I can pull out that negative sign, 1 over u du. And the integral of 1 over u du is the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. Now remember that, I, again, we have to undo this u. So u being equal to this cosine function. This is going to be minus the natural log of the absolute value of the cosine of x plus c. All right, let's do initial value problem, and that, that, should, that should finish it. Let's see. Yeah, that's it. Example. Solve the initial value problem. So um, what I have is I have dy dx is equal to 4x times x squared 
plus eight to the um, one third. Oh, that's good. This is gonna be nice because I didn't do one of those types. Where y of zero is equal to zero. I don't know why they always go through zero zero. Lazy in my opinion. We should do something more interesting, but it is what it is. Okay, so. What I need to do is I'm trying to find a function that's that 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 is that makes this true. So I'm trying to find a function whose derivative is equal to this thing right here. So in order to do that, in order to find a function whose derivative is equal to this thing, I have to take the antiderivative of the derivative. So that means my solution, my y function that I'm looking for, is going to be equal to the antiderivative of the derivative of y with respect to x. So it's the antiderivative of this thing. That's why that goes here. And every time you take an antiderivative, you have to have a dx in here. So this is going to be equal to the antiderivative of 4x times x squared plus 8 to the minus 1 third dx. So my u is, let's use the function inside. So I bet you it says x squared plus 8. So let's try it. u is equal to x squared plus 8. And then du is going to be equal to 2x dx. All right. Well, I have a 4x dx. So one thing I could have done is I could have just pulled out the 4 and then worried about that. But I, what, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this 2x into a 4x. So I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by 2. 2 du is equal to 4x dx. All right, so um, now I can make our substitutions. Remember that, that your black function is still this negative one-third power. So this is going to be equal to the antiderivative of your 4x dx becomes 2 du. Well, actually, we're going to do our, I bet we're going to do our black, the black part of the function first. So this is going to become u to the one-third. And then your 4x dx is going to become 2 du. So this is equal to 2 times the antiderivative of u to the negative 1 third du. And now it's power rule. 2, adding 1 to it is going to be plus 3 over 3 is going to be um, 2 over 3. So the 2 over 3 divided by 2 over 3 plus c. So this is equal to 2 times 3 halves u to the 2 thirds plus c which is equal to um, 3u to the 2 thirds plus c. I should have substituted. So this is 3. Substituting your u is going to be equal to x squared plus 8 to the 2 thirds plus c. Now I'm almost done. When you solve the initial value problem, this value right here gives you your c. So this is your y. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in 0 comma 0. So y is equal to 0. That's what this says. Is equal to, and I'm going to plug in x equals 0. So that's x. So I'm going to plug in 0 over here. So this is going to be 3 times 0 squared plus 8 to the 2 thirds. Okay, there that'll work. Plus c. So cleaning this up, this is 8 to the 2 thirds. So, you know, that goes away because it's a zero. So 8 to the 2 thirds, well, 8 squared is 64, and the key root of 64 is 4. So this is going to be 3 times 4 plus C. So that means it's equal to zero. So minus 12 is going to be equal to C. So my answer, unfortunately, is going to have to go down here. So therefore, Y is going to be equal to 3X squared plus 8 to the 2 thirds. Minus 12. That's my answer. I wanted one more really good one. Let's see if I can find it.
We'll do one more. Oh, actually, let's do two more. The antiderivative of, um, say, x all over x minus 3 dx. And what this is going to give us an idea of is, uh, is we've been mo uh, manipulating the, the, the red side, the du, but you don't have to. You can actually manipulate both sides. So, like I told you, that u tends to be in the bottom, unless you see a natural log. So this is going to be your u, and u is equal to x minus 3. Now your du is going to be the differential of that, so du, or the derivative of this is just 1, so du is equal to dx. Now, um, notice that I, I'm not able to substitute for this, this x up here, because I need, I need this function to turn all into um, u, so so far what I have is I have x all over u dx, I mean well, all over u du, but the problem is um, this entire function has to be a function of x and not a function of u. So what's nice is if you look at the green, I can actually solve that for x. I know that x would be equal to u plus 3. So that allows me to write this as u plus 3 over u du. So what's nice about that is we've been manipulating this side all the time, you know, multiplying and dividing by a constant. Um, we can do the same thing to the other side as well. So now that this is a monomial denominator, you can do the integral of u over u plus 3 over u du. So this is equal to the antiderivative of 1 plus 3 over u du. So this is going to be u plus 3 natural log of the absolute value of u plus c, where u is equal to x minus 3. So x minus 3, I guess I don't need parentheses there. Now I have one more. Let's grab my book. I don't want to mess it up. There's one more I want to show you guys. show you because it's a clever one that's tends to get people where are you So um, the other, the last one I'm going to show you is this. This is the integral of, uh, let's do 3x to the fifth times the square root of x cubed plus 1 dx. Now it's, this is going to take a similar formula to what we did there. Our u tends to be the function inside the function, so our u is going to be this x cubed plus 1. But the problem is when you set up as x cubed plus 1, your du is not what you're hoping. Your du is 3x squared dx. But I don't have a 3x squared. I got a 3, which is good. I guess I'm all right with that. And I have a dx. But uh, it's, this, this x to the fifth is not working. So let's, let's rewrite this. What I know is that, um, is that this is the same thing as the integral of, well, x to the fifth is actually built of these two powers of x squared and x cubed. So let's let's write that. Let's write this as 3x squared times x cubed times the square root of x cubed plus three plus one dx. So I can make my substitution a little bit better now. So let's let's finish this. So this is going to be three. We'll worry about this x cubed in a second here. I know that um that your 3x squared dx is right there. I know that your x cubed plus 1 is right here. 
So the red becomes um, your three x squared dx is just du. So that's kind of nice. That's gonna be, it's gonna just be du. I don't even need that three. That's cool. So that's just so. Um, and then the black part. So I'm gonna have the square root of. This is gonna be u, and then the red is just gonna become du. But the problem is, what about this x cubed here? Well, I can't write x cubed. You, you can't just have x cubed here because uh, this this has to be a function of all of u's. So x can't be there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back up to the green function over here, and I'm going to solve this for x cubed. So x cubed is equal to u minus 1. So that means I can substitute in u minus 1 there. I should use that for a color, but so I guess the u minus 1 since it's technically part of that expression, would be equal to x cubed, so I have u minus 1. Now we can clean it up. So we have the integral of u minus 1 times u to the um, 1 half. And what's nice about this is, you know, I couldn't simplify. You can't multiply this inside because um, it doesn't have the right power on it. And plus, and, and another thing that you can't do is you can't square root a sum. You can square root a product, but not a sum. So there's no way to square root that x cubed plus 1. So the fact that, that it's a binomial underneath the radical is, is, is not useful. But now that this is a monomial, and this is all these things are basically, a, um, I can just distribute this. I can multiply this here. I can multiply this here. And, it's, and now it's integrable. So this is um, when I multiply, I add the powers. So 1 plus 1 half is 3 halves and then minus u to the 1 half du, so this is going to be equal to um, u to the 5 halves divided by 5 halves minus u to the 3 halves divided by 3 halves plus c, so 2 fifths u to the 5 halves minus 2 thirds u to the 3 halves plus c, where your u is at x cubed plus 1. And we're done. All right, that's the end of it. So.